Lake Ontario offers some of the best and most diverse trout and salmon fishing in the Great Lakes. This week on Fishing 411 TV, Mark and Jake Romanak travel to the port of Olcott in western New York, where summertime is prime time to experience a mixed bag of tackle-busting salmon and acrobatic steelhead. For those anglers willing to burn a little gasoline, Lake Ontario's offshore waters rarely disappoint. Goodness, that's pulling hard. And we are hooked up. Welcome to New York. If you're an enthusiast of salmon fishing, sooner or later you're probably going to find yourself heading east in the Great Lakes to uh, to Lake Ontario. And, uh, and the reason for it is, is Lake Ontario just provides some of the most consistently excellent trout and salmon fishing you'll find anywhere in the Great Lakes. And uh, we've talked about this before on other shows. Partly what's going on here is it's the last lake in the Great Lakes chain. So as a result of that, all of the nutrients that come down from all the Great Lakes eventually end up here. And through the Niagara River, all that nice rich water that would typically come out of Lake Erie ends up here. And, um, and rich water means lots of plankton. Lots of plankton means lots of bait. <laughs> lots of bait means lots of salmon. <laughs> and that is a beautiful thing. This fish is floundering way back there. This is a uh, what we call a weighted steel. So this fish is 300 feet away, minimum, and just tugging and tugging and tugging, and you gotta love it. So it's gonna be a while before we get this girl in. There was a big blow that came through here this week. Kind of screwed up the fishing a little bit, scattered the fish a little bit. And so when that happens, you go into pre-fish mode. And you put some stuff high, you put some stuff in the middle of the water column, you put some stuff deep, and you just hope for the best. And uh, until you can kind of start to figure out some patterns. Whoa! <laughs> Did not like that. Just about the time I thought we had him under control. Well, pretty decent fish. Yeah. He sure is. Let's see if he just plays well here for another minute. Keep them coming. Nice fish, Dad. Well, nice fish. <laughs> that is not a bad way to start the day. <laughs> Chinook salmon, Lake Ontario style.
If you're new to salmon fishing, you might not know how to identify the different species of salmon. And I'll tell you an easy one right here. If you look down in his throat there, that jet black mouth, that is a dead giveaway you're looking at a Chinook or what some people call king salmon. Cohos have white gums and white inside of their mouth. So if it's white on the inside, it's probably a coho. If it's black on the inside, it's going to be a Chinook salmon. You know, I'd say one of the more common questions we get when it comes to trolling is how do we control our speed? Do we use a kicker motor? Do we use our big motor? What if I don't own a kicker motor? Well, there's a lot of really good options out there for you if you don't have a kicker motor. Uh, and this year we weren't able to put a kicker motor on our boat yet, but I still want to be able to get down to trolling speed. So in this case, I'm using my big engine, my big Yamaha engine to, to control our speed as we're trolling. Uh, problem is, is a lot of times I just simply can't go slow enough with that big engine. So in this case, I'm going to use something that's called trolling bags or drift bags. And I have one right here. Basically all it is is a big piece of fabric that when you put it in the water, it'll actually open up and it'll slow your speed down. Now I like to run one on either side of the boat and the reason for that is because then it's pulling evenly. If you put one drift bag on one side of the boat, the boat wants to pull to that side. But if you put the same side bag on the other side of the boat, you get a nice even pull. The benefit of that is now I can control my speed. If I need to go slower, I can pull back on the throttle and slow down. If I need to go faster, I can speed up. Now today we're actually dealing with a lot of current out here. So depending on which direction I'm trolling, depends on if I'm putting the bags in. They're really easy to set, so the benefit of a drift bag is you can control your speed and you don't have to have that kicker motor. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Where we are. I trip that board so it starts to drag back a little bit. We're hooked up again. This is a another one of the weighted steel lines that's fired. And there are basically three different kinds of weighted lines that are commonly fished here out in the Great Lakes. Um, Lycor, which has been around literally forever, um, very, very user friendly. And then there's something called stranded copper or braided copper. And it got popular in the 90s and it's still um, out there. A lot of guys still using it. And then the new kit on the block is what we're using right now. It's something called weighted steel. And it's made by torpedo divers. All three of them basically function very similar. You select a length of line that you want to use to get to a specific depth. And in this case right now, I've got 300 foot of weighted steel out, which is going to get me down close to that 60 foot range. So you select a, a length of line that you want to use, you put a leader on one end, you put backing line on the other. And most of us when we fish these are fishing them in combination with an inline planer board like an offshore board. And so the beauty of these is it allows you to fish a variety of depths, allows you to stack lines on the outside with planer boards uh, to cover an enormous amount of water. And they become very popular in the Great Lakes because the water's clear in the Great Lakes and they're very stealthy. So it gets your lines out away from the boat works very, very well at targeting these silver fish. There you go. You know, if you've watched Fishing 401 in the past, you've definitely seen us release planer boards. We've been doing it for a very long time. But a lot of times we'll fish monofilament as our backer. Now on these steel lines, just simply to get enough backer on the reel that we're fishing, we're fishing a 50 size reel, we decided to go with a braided line. Now if you're going to be a braid fisherman, you're going to want to use a little bit different release to release your planer board. In this case, this is a Sam's Pro release uh, that we have on an SST Pro Mag offshore board. It's a little bit bigger planer board to be able to handle the weight of the steel line to get it out to the side. And the beautiful thing about the Sam's Pro Pro release is it does exactly that. It is a release, not a clip. So when you clip it down, that braid actually wraps on this plunger right here, and you can release that plunger. The line comes off that front release, the board will swing back, and then it's just hooked to this OR16 on the back. The beautiful thing of that is you can still stack multiple lines aside, not having to clear your inside boards uh, to be able to get that fish over top of those lines and get it into the boat. Side here, see if I can get him in here a little bit. Oh yes, to tell look at that. And that's that beautiful color. Wow, that's a bonus. We'll take that. <laughs> all silver, all chrome. Man, I love steelhead. What a beautiful fish. That one going on the outside board here, Dad. I heard that one, Jake. Yeah, the steel line has been hot today. And I talked about it before, but you can see the backer that we're using here on the steel line is a braided line. 
And the reason for that is braid is super tough, but I'm only using a 50 size reel to get this 300 steel on, and I need that braided line to get enough backer where I feel comfortable. About 220 yards is kind of ideal for the backer world. So to get that on a size 50 reel and a 300 steel, we had to go to that braided line. And then once my dad takes the board off here, I'll talk about how we terminate the, the backer to the steel, um, because that's a little bit different as well. All right, Jaker, she's all yours. Okay. So we'll talk about how we terminate the backer to the actual weighted steel, which is a little bit different. So one of the tough things about this weighted steel line is how to connect it. How do you put your backer to the steel? How do you put your leader to the steel? And we do that with something that's called hollow core. You can see that's what this is right here. It's almost like a leg cord type material, but it's hollow. There's nothing in the inside. And you can see the knot that we use. We actually slide that hollow core up over top of the steel line. And we put a little bit, little needle knot on the end there to hold that. But you can see that weighted seal is actually coated right over top of it there. Now, it's a little bit of a complicated knot. It's a beautiful thing about the internet though, is you can go on YouTube and you can type in ways to terminate weighted steel and there's step-by-step -step processes exactly how to do that. So it's really important to have a good uh, transition between your backer and your weighted steel. The beautiful thing about the hollow core is it's super easy to tie to the hollow core itself. So if I need to change out another leader or something happens to that leader, it's no big deal. I can just use a double uni knot to that hollow core itself and I'm right back in action again. Another steel net, huh? Another steel net. That's a good a one too, Jake. That's, 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 nice that's actually fish. a really nice fish. That's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful drama. All right, let's pull this fish up and show them off. That is a beautiful steelhead there, Dad. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. Hey, if you want to check out more Fishing 411 TV, you need to subscribe to our weekly newsletter. The Fishing 411 weekly newsletter gives you so much information. There's a lot of great tech tips out there that are teaching you how to catch all different types of species of fish across the upper Midwest, from walleyes, trout, salmon, bluegills, you name it. If it swims, there's information on that weekly newsletter. There's also really good tech tip videos that Fishing 411 has produced that we put out there that are just short videos, YouTube videos, that if you don't have a lot of time but want some fishing information, it's a great way to get that information. There's also full-length television shows that we put weekly on the Fishing 411 newsletter. So if you want to check out the shows, maybe you missed an episode, you're not going to miss it if you subscribe to that weekly newsletter. Basically, all you need to do is go to fishing411.net, go to the blog posting, and you'll see exactly where you can subscribe. And you'll get this weekly update of what the Fishing 411 crew is up to on that week. This week's episode was filmed in Lake Ontario near the town of Olcott, New York. If you're looking for a summertime destination for trout and salmon, you're going to have to check out Olcott. It is excellent fishing. I think you'll find it's a great place to be if you're looking for coho, chinook salmon, or steelhead. Hooked up down on the downrigger. Woo! Oh, Pull tight on him here. There we go. Now I have a meat rig on this rigger. And we've been moving it around all day. You know, one of the benefits of a downrigger is it's really easy to change depths. So if you see some fish on your graph, you can drop it down, you can raise it up. And it's really easy to change your depths out throughout the day. And that's exactly what we've been doing. Yeah, I'm coming up here pretty good there, Dad. I'm ready. I am ready, young man. I tell the nice thing about rigger fish is they get in pretty quick, too. Yeah. You don't have to fight them a country mile behind the boat. He's still pretty green behind the oh, back he of the is boat, green. <laughs> he is green indeed. <laughs> Looks like he might be a little bit smaller king. It's all right. He is still feisty though. The day after a blow, we'll take whatever we can get him to do. Woo. Come on, buddy, lift your head up. He don't want to. He don't want to play nice. <laughs> Just don't swim at the boat. I didn't, didn't want to do that snap. 
There we go. I got him on that one, though. Nice. <laughs> he did not want to quit. All right, let's show this one off. A little bit smaller king. This is about a two-year-old Chinook here. Oh, but still not a bad fish, and this fish came on a meat rig. And I'll talk a little bit more about exactly what a meat rig is and how I had this set up here in a second. Uh, first, we're going to put this one in the box, get set back up, and catch another one. If you've never fished a meat rig before, I'm going to walk you through exactly what it is because it's pretty crazy looking, but I tell you what, it works really well, especially when the sun comes up, uh, those middle of the day bites, it's pretty hard to beat a meat rig. All it basically is, is just a plastic head, and you can see the head right here, and one of the things that most people, I don't know if they notice, but the one thing that's very important with this plastic head is there's a little bit of a curve to the head itself. That helps with the rotation. You want to have that nice slow rotation in the water, and there are already curved right from the package right when you buy your meat rigs. A lot of different brands out there. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of herring. This is a piece of cut herring. It's salted. And we're going to take it and we're going to push it right up into the meat head itself. And then we take a toothpick and we grab a toothpick sitting right here and we stick it in the hole that's in the side of the head. And that basically just pegs that piece of meat right there. So once I stick that toothpick in there, I break it off so it's flush and it's a nice clean presentation. Then going up the meat rig itself, a lot of times what you'll find is what we call a teaser rig. And there's a bunch of different little flies, uh, sometimes they're little squids, basically just attractants up the line. And as you go up that line, then you team it up with a rotator. And there's a lot of different rotators out there. In this case, this is an eight inch pro troll. And the one thing that this rotator is doing is exactly what the name calls it. It rotates and it gives big rotations in the water. And basically this meat's going to slowly be rotating from the meat head and the rotator is going to go like this. So what you have is a whole big presentation moving around and you really can't beat at the business end having a big chunk of meat on the other end. So the meat rig is a great summertime presentation, great daytime presentation when the bite gets tough and to put that fish in the boat for us today. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Dio Corporation. Special considerations are provided by ProPure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. Screamer! We got a screamer on the down rigger here, Dad. Woo! Boy, I'm trying to get another meat rig in the water. As of late, that's been a pretty good presentation. All I hear is just a drag screaming out on the rigger. I didn't even see the bite. This is a better fish. Nice. Woo -hoo -hoo. This is the new Optimum TS downriggers that we're using. And they are so cool because they integrate with my electronics, uh, like my fish hawk unit. And I can see all of my fish hawk data, my speed, my temp, all that information right on the rigger itself, which is really handy. Um, there's basically just an LCD screen right on the top of it. And I can see all the information we need every, every instant when we're trout and salmon fishing is right there at the tip of your fingers. It looks like, feels like a nice, whoo, it is a little bit nicer. He's me. mad. <laughs> Look at He's me. very mad. <laughs> Living up to his reputation. Him. Out of the other rigger line there. Oop. I might not have got it. It might be in it though. Nope. Well, I, think I, think I think you're over top. I think you're over top. Let's see if I can swing them over this way. All right. Big old tuna coming this way. Nice. That's good job, Jake. <laughs> nice job on the nice. plate. Nice. Look at that torpedo, Dad. <laughs> Love it. Boy, they are spunky. You know, kings get bigger than this one yet, but they're getting bigger for us today. And I would argue that a king salmon of that size right there uh, it might even fight harder than these big ones. They are so acrobatic. Uh, turning these fish are tough. They go wherever they want to go. And uh, we just hold on for dear life and try to land these things. But that that's a pretty fish. Very pretty fish. In fact, I'm going to swing them around, show this side off not as beat up on the net, but that is a gorgeous Lake Ontario King Salmon. This is a quality fish here. This is a quality fish. I'm going to back off on that guy just a little bit. Until so we can turn him. <laughs> Gotta love that. Don't you? Oh man, there he finally stopped. Now we, now we, well I thought he stopped. Not so much. Not so much. All right, now we get into the meat and potatoes of this. So we've started to, uh, to figure things out a little bit. 
our early bites were on spoons high in the water column. And, uh, and then the lake started to stabilize a little bit and we finally found temperature with the fish hawk, about 50 down, between 50 and 60 is where the temperature is. Woo, look at him go. And, uh, and now with this fish, we've caught fish on every single rig in the water. So when everything that you got down there is getting bit, you know you're getting them pretty dialed in. And that's a, that's a good thing. That is a good thing. Oh, that's a nice fish there, Dad. I can keep him inside that rigger line. Got him in the school. Nice fish. Well, Lake Ontario continues to amaze me. I've been chasing salmon my whole life. I'm telling you, if you like salmon fishing, you got to have to like Lake Ontario. Hey, my name is Mark Romanak. I hope you enjoyed today's little program. Check us out online as well, and uh, we look forward to seeing you here same time, same place next week. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> they are spunky. Oh, just pulled off. Right oh, there on the surface. Still, still <laughs> I'm I not sure. Know he's unhooked. I'm not sure, but I think he gave you the middle fin.